Greetings, chemists of Tabor. I hope you're all doing well. I'm sorry that uh, today I will be running through a video version of the experiment. It's a pity that you all can't be here to take part, uh, but hopefully this will be informative and I'll try to keep it abridged and not, not go on for too long. Uh, my intention is to flash up the data table to make sure that you're getting the data as we go along uh, in, in small increments each time. Just to remind you, this uh, lab is based on specific heat. Uh, we know about the specific heat capacity of water, we know the value for that. Uh, so today we're going to be looking at the specific heat of lead and of copper. Uh, so we're going to be taking those two metals, we're going to be uh, adding them into a heated vessel, uh, making sure that we're taking the temperature of each of those metals. Uh, we're then going to be putting those in a, a calorimeter and seeing what effect that has on the temperature of the water in there. So hopefully you've had a chance to have a look at the procedure. Uh, we'll get right on with it and um, yep, I hope this is helpful. Here are the two metals that we're going to be working with today. As a reminder, uh, the plan is that we're first going to heat a measured quantity of one of these metals. Then we're going to add that heated metal to a measured quantity of water, which is at a known temperature. One of these two substances is going to lose heat and the other will gain heat, uh, because of course heat always flows from an area of higher temperature to an area of lower temperature. Uh, furthermore, the heat lost by one of the substances is going to be equal to the heat gained by the other. Using these facts, we're aiming to calculate the specific heat of each of these two metals. So just to have a quick look at these metals, the observations, here we have copper, hopefully you're familiar with that. Um, we have our small balls there, some are, some are shinier than others. And here is our lead, slightly more uniform and of course a bit heavier as well. Looking at the rest of our setup here, we have some water that's just getting to the boil. Here are our uh, metals from the stockroom. Here are what will be our calorimeters, just polystyrene cups, um, nice and stable there in the beaker. And we will be putting our metals into a couple of boiling tubes. Here is our first step, we're simply heating our two metals. Uh, just to save time, I've already measured out uh, the, the masses for these two. So for lead, we have 51.13 grams, and for copper, there is 51.41 grams. Uh, what we'll do next is just remove these using hot mitts. Uh, we'll be a bit, bit hot there, and we're going to put them into the test tube rack here. Uh, moving as quickly as we can, we're going to take the temperature. Uh, of course, every moment that we wait with them here, they'll be losing temperature, or losing heat, I should say, to the surroundings. Uh, we'll take the temperature there, and then we'll very quickly um, get those metal samples thrown into the calorimeters here. Ideally, we would have lids on these. Um, again, that will be an inefficiency. We'll be losing some heat to the surroundings, but hopefully our results um, should still work out quite nicely. So I'm having a few problems um, showing the readings on the screen here, but just so you know, the initial temperature of the uh, water in the copper calorimeter um, is, let's just have a quick look, it's 20.6 degrees Celsius. And the initial temperature in the lead uh, calorimeter is 20.3 Celsius. Okay, so this has been here a few moments, ever so slightly tricky doing this um, whilst recording a video. Uh, nonetheless, we have a temperature of uh, 91.5 degrees Celsius for our lead, and I'm now very quickly going to remove that, and we're going to put that into our calorimeter. And we're going to give that a quick stir with the glass rod. Our next step is simply to take another temperature reading here. And we'll come back in just a moment to see what that ends up being. And for the lead, our final temperature reading is 21.6 degrees Celsius. Uh, so we've, just as a reminder, we've gone from 20.3 up to 21.6. Uh, therefore, that is also the, the final temperature of the metal, um, which is also in there. 
Okay, so our copper is now up to 92.2 degrees Celsius, and we're just going to move that into our calorimeter in just a moment. Make sure we get our hot hands on. And in we go there. Give that a quick stir, and I'll give you a temperature reading in just a moment. So we have our final temperature reading today uh, for the water of the copper sample, that is 24.9 degrees. So 24.9 Celsius up from an initial temperature of 20.6. I'll just quickly flash up the data table onto the screen. Hopefully that, that makes things uh, a bit clearer for you, uh, easy to follow and to understand. Uh, sorry, it's been a bit rushed and uh, it's a pity that each of you couldn't carry out the experiment today. Hopefully this has been a good walk through guide. I think the only data point I forgot to mention was the initial volume of water in each of the calorimeters. Uh, so for the copper calorimeter, we had 74.8 milliliters of water, and for the lead, there were uh, 75.2 milliliters. So hopefully uh, you now have everything to go at uh, to work on the post-lab questions. Good luck with it. Please don't hesitate to reach out to either myself or to your chemistry teacher should you need a hand. Always here, uh, so please do get in touch. Good luck with it.